in my ex guitarist's way of saying it, uh, straight road dogs. There are these lines drawn, and I always felt like I wasn't the same as them. Doesn't mean you are playing in a girl band. You have to dress like how they always see in TV. We can be whoever we want. I want whoever is listening to the songs to just normalize the queer narrative because I don't think it has to be a big deal. I wouldn't say I belong somewhere, but I would say I'm heard. It never really was it seems. I live life it been what it been. I live life it is what it is. What hit me the hardest was probably PSLE when I didn't do well, and then you are labeled as like you know the normal technical guy. You can't do the normal straight road shit like being a doctor, lawyer, banker. I guess it was like, oh shit, I'm not, I'm not normal, or I don't get to be normal because of having this segregation. It's like, oh, I'm just not smart enough to like, hang around you. I was like almost an outcast. Never be sensitive because I'm a man and that's not appropriate. So I grew up in Hong Kong and I spent 18 years there and then I moved to Singapore in 2014 for NS, yay NS. And the honest truth is I didn't really have any attachment to Singapore. I almost felt kind of betrayed. I was like, why do I need to serve NS when I haven't even lived here like at all? And the first three months that I was here, I was a loner. So yeah, there was definitely some kind of void. Because of that, it pushed me to go and find my community here. Coming from a Muslim family, they have a little bit more expectation for how their daughter has to be. And then playing hardcore music also. Music. <laughs> I think all of us experience this. Yeah. We are always being judged as the naughty ones. I felt like I was a misfit. I think as we grew older, we found each other, so it so changed. We feel us. like we have, you know, we have someone to click with, like we are not yeah. alone. It's always been a safe haven, uh, a sanctuary. You know, as a young child, I love to just like lock myself up in the room and blast music, right? And I think we all have had moments of that in the life. One, two, three! Our band was called Kiara Kelp. So we were almost called Chunk of Mucus, which I think was like a much better band name. We should have gone with that, but yeah, we stuck with this. Playing music in my younger years, uh, I guess helped me understand that I am not going to be a straight road dog. <laughs> and, uh, I am just going to do music and I put both my feet in. I didn't really look back. Not that I was purposely trying to find a carve away for myself or whatever, but I found a lot of comfort in it. I found peace in just writing music. I found a, a space for creativity. Uh, I found a space to do whatever I want, write whatever I want. So that means a lot to me. Yeah. We've done quite a lot of stuff together. We did, yeah. yeah. You were my only client then. <laughs> Dude, I used to write songs every day and now I probably write like two or three songs a week. Now whenever I'm writing a song, I hate that one of the first things that comes to mind is like, mm. is it packageable? I kind of work my way to a certain level of professionalism or experience and I tend to bring the level up to some extent, I would say, in a way that there are some points of time where even organizers are like, hey, you know, um, why is your rate this way, you know, like, why don't you just play for free or you no know, exposure, all this type of nonsense shit, right? And it's like, hey, I did not like work my way up like 15, 18 years of Pan Lam just to play free. People have images of what you should be, and there's almost an expectation if you say you're a queer artist. Like, I guess a stereotype would be like, just very flamboyant and loud in the way that you dress. And to them, it's just like, why are you taking up so much space, right? So we get a lot of comparison lah, between male bands and us. Not just music-wise, but they also like, present the looks on right? I think it was when we first took like a band photo together, like we had comments telling us they look like hippos, or mm. you guys are too, they too fat They call us fat ties. Yeah. <laughs> fat ex ties. Yeah, so, uh, well, we embrace it now, but yeah. I mean, it definitely did hurt like when people compared us or they talk about our bodies like that because you don't really hear that for like guy bands. Mm. It's limitless what people's comments can be. I have some kind of like self-worth issues, but at that point, those young days, 
it was very yeah, kind of like desperate for acceptance, you know. But I had to go through that, and obviously that you know spiraled me down into different emotional distorts. I think sometimes I feel that the more I try to prove it, it becomes more obvious that you're doing it for the sake of proving, but not to really let that true light shine. Post-hardcore or hardcore music to me is an outlet for all of us to express. It's very emotive, it's very cathartic, it's shouting. The reason I write music is for both parties, the oppressed and the oppressors. Like, we always try and write from the other side of the coin. So yeah, I mean, Mouth of Madness is really about how we strongly feel that religion is separating us from seeing eye to eye. And we really want to like let them know, start thinking about treating each other as humans first. That's like the number one thing. So I guess like what I want when people listen to my music is just to accept a queer narrative in love stories, you know, be it heartbreak or being cheated on or falling in love. Like it's just, it's a normal thing. And that's why I think like, you know, my approach is I'm going to be on stage and I'm going to sing songs about my ex-lovers who just so happen to be men. And it's not a big deal. Regardless of your gender or your sexual orientation, like we are all experiencing the same things. So how we got trapped as one of our tracks is by Alin, who is our guitarist. So she had a male friend who's a female friend is a big victim of a sexual harassment. He wrote the lyrics and then we formed the tracks and all and we recorded the song. Okay, so when I first heard the lyrics for Trap, I felt it was quite relatable to each of us individually in the past, like uh, sexual harassment and abuse. So yeah, I was really excited to put that track out there for other victims or anyone who knows their friends who have gone through this. In a way, it's a very vulnerable pursuit. So when that happens, then you would have a certain innate um, expectation that the song touches someone or the music inspires people in different ways. It's that kind of like humane connection. So the first time ever like going to Bay Beats and checking out bands that I didn't know were local bands, I found out about Plain Sunset, uh, Park Jelly, Surreal, My Squared Circle. I mean, I didn't know what a local band sounded like, but I just didn't think that it came from Singapore. So it was very myopic of me. It definitely inspired and helped me to be more serious in my craft. Um, now that it's like an animal festival, it's almost our mecca of rock music in Singapore where we get together and um, celebrate music, you know. We don't really care what people think. And yeah, we were all kind of united in this sense of like, um, just doing whatever the fuck we want. We want people to come to our shows and, you know, see what our music is all about. So we want to perform, you come in, and then realise that we're not a satanic band. <laughs> what I would say to my younger self is fuck all that shit. It's always kind of like that uphill, um, battle of like getting acceptance. I suppose it's really just learning to even accept that not everyone needs to accept you. Like all of the musicians, all the artists here have different stories to tell. Hopefully through that people who are not part of the community will realize that oh we're actually not that different. Why I actually am here today still doing music and fighting for music is because if the general public were to think about what they are really proud of, they would not think of Singaporean artists. It was one thing I would change is to create a stronger music culture in Singapore. Yeah, there were so many men. No, he's the dad that's like spinning it for the children. <laughs> 